Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I'm doing week 34 of my 2023 reads. This week I finished a buddy read, a couple of kind of comfort rereads, and I DNF'd a couple of books. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. So first, the buddy read that I finished was A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, and I buddy read this with my friend Cynthia at Book Whimsy. Um, we had such a fun time buddy reading this, especially because it's this sort of cozy horror mystery with a very slow burn start. And so as we were reading, there were so many check-ins where we were just speculating about what was going to happen and what certain references to things meant, and it was just quite fun to buddy read this. The basic premise of the story is that we follow Sam, who is an archaeal entomologist, I believe. She studies at dig sites, kind of um, bugs and things like that. And she has ended up going to stay with her mom in the house that her mom inherited from her mother and is finding that kind of something's wrong with her mom. Her mom seems very anxious, very scared, um, and something's weird about this house. Sam, being a scientist, is, you know, very based in the real world. She's a really fun character in the way that she wants logical explanations for everything and, you know, she tries to figure out what's going on. But what's going on maybe isn't something that can be explained by science. It's a little bit supernatural and creepy. I think that the um, pacing of the first half of this especially was just so, um, so immersive. Cynthia called it delicious, right? It's just, you feel this slow building of, of creepiness and, uh, and kind of the horror elements that really are so engaging. Um, I think Angela at Literature Science Alliance has also described this as cozy horror. And I really think that that makes sense for this. Um, so we loved the first half of this, but the second half where, especially I'd say the last quarter, where the action actually happens, the pacing I think is a little bit off. Um, because that first half was so slow build, I really wanted the rest of the story to kind of follow through on that, but it ramped up to, to high speed very suddenly without kind of developing that. And the ending just felt very abrupt almost, like everything that happened happened all at once. And I wanted more time spent in the middle part of the creepiness and then more time also spent in that final part just exploring all of the creepy things that were happening rather than just having action. I think that's also personally, you know, my taste. I don't love a ton of action. Um, and if it does happen, I kind of just want to be in the moment a little bit longer rather than rushing through it. So I felt the pacing was a little off. There also were, um, I think maybe because it's this cozy horror type of book, it's got some elements of humor in it. And sometimes the humor worked for me, but sometimes it went just a little bit too silly for me, which is the thing that happens with T. King Fisher. Um, sometimes her humor style just goes a little silly for my style. Um, but otherwise, I thought this was a, a pretty fun read. And I think that if you're interested in trying some horror that isn't too, you know, too intense, I I'm very, very squeamish and nothing in here actually grossed me out even though I could see there are some scenes that might gross out other people I was actually totally fine with it so uh, for somebody who just generally doesn't read anything that is violent or graphic uh, I think that this is actually a pretty good book to pick up if you want to read some horror so overall I gave it four out of five stars then I did a bunch of rereads of some Georgette Heyer historical romance novels. Uh, Georgette Heyer wrote in the 1920s through the 1970s, and she is one of my favorite romance authors. Um, her books tend to be on the rom-com side. They are really heavy on the ridiculous and just all sorts of comedy of errors type of uh, stories, and they tend to have romance, but it's often, you know, it's very closed door, um, more just people liking each other and kind of that initial um, falling in love. So they're very gentle and very fun and really good when I just want something comforting to reread. So I picked up a bunch of those this week, starting with The Nunsuch. So The Nunsuch is a story about Waldo, who is the Nunsuch. He's somebody who's really um, very popular in society. This is a Regency romance. He is somebody who's great at all kinds of sport, and he ends up inheriting um, an estate that's kind of run down in the countryside, and he goes there to sort of rehabilitate that estate so that he can use it. Um, and he brings his younger cousin with him, and when they go there, they discover that there's a neighbor um, where there's a 
kind of the 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 niece of the neighbor uh, is this great heiress, and she's you know maybe 17 years old, very incredibly beautiful, but also incredibly incredibly spoiled and just not a very good person and the uh waldo's younger cousin kind of falls for this girl which waldo's a little bit concerned about but waldo ends up falling for the kind of governess slash companion of the girl who is trying her best to uh keep the this very spoiled and willful girl in check as she does a lot of things um so i really liked waldo and the governess's uh kind of interactions they're both kind of mature people who are very calm and you really like both of them so i liked their romance quite a bit but a lot of the story centers around this heiress who is so such a bad person she's so spoiled and so mean and so petty um and just all of her antics and and Scylla, the governess getting kind of pulled into that and then waldo trying to help out and so there's a lot of drama in this that isn't so much my style but i quite like the main couple and their interactions and so that part was really sweet so this book overall i gave four out of five stars Next, I reread Sylvester or the Wicked Uncle, um, which is basically about Sylvester, who is a duke, and he is um, very kind of arrogant and cold and standoffish. Uh, and he made a pretty poor impression on Phoebe, uh, who is just a very mousy type of country girl uh, when she was in London. And she's got this very vivid imagination. She ended up writing a novel, a very outlandish novel, um, but she based her main villain character on Sylvester, who has a very distinctive eyebrows and so she wrote this and it ends up getting published and uh, while it's in the process of being published so before it comes out she ends up meeting Sylvester again because their families are trying to set them up because the families have a connection and she they're not really interested in each other but uh, she ends up sort of becoming friendly with him and over time that friendship builds into maybe something a little bit more but all the time there's this looming dread of but what about when that book comes out what is going to happen and so i really liked the first half of this especially um I think that Phoebe is just such a, a fun character. She's somebody who just really, um, she's she's got some difficult home life, but she has her own spunk. She's a very uh, unique individual. And Sylvester just constantly is getting put in his place by her. And that's a lot of fun. Um, so there's quite a bit of antics and fun stuff in the first half. The second half of this goes into high drama mode though. And I love Georgette Heyer's kind of rom-com stuff, but when it gets into high drama, Drama, that's just stressful for me and so I was looking for more of a cozy comforting reread and this was just more stressful this one I, I haven't reread for a bit so I kind of forgotten all of the details of what had happened but it was a lot of stress and Sylvester is not the greatest guy um, he really is pretty arrogant and a little bit petulant at times so that part was frustrating but the first half was just very cute and and exactly what I was looking for so overall I gave this three and a half out of five stars and the last Georgette Heyer reread this week was The Quiet Gentleman, which is about Gervais, who is, um, he's been in the military, but he ends up inheriting um, an earldom when his father dies. And he's kind of estranged from his family, especially his stepmother and his younger stepbrother. Um, but he goes home to sort of inherit the estate and he is somebody who is um, very fashionable and very uh, quiet and seems to be mild mannered, but has a little bit of an undercore of steel. And when he goes back, he finds that there's quite a bit of hostility against him from his family. His stepmother and his stepbrother feel that the stepbrother should have inherited rather than uh, Gervais um, just because he was so estranged and they're like you were in the military how did you not even die um, you know fighting Napoleon and everything like that um, but so there's there's quite a bit of tension there and things start happening where it seems like maybe somebody has it out for Gervais and there's a lot of suspicion that maybe his stepbrother is to blame this story is I would say it has a romance but it is 
so secondary to the main plot and it comes in really only at the very end. The majority of this story is focused on this kind of almost gothic feeling mystery where, um, you know, stuff keeps happening and it's a little bit dangerous and what is going on and, you know, is Gervais going to be okay and who is to blame and all that sort of stuff. And so that's like the main part of this, which I think I find less interesting than the kind of rom-coms that Georgette Heyer writes. So overall, I was kind of, you know, it was, it was fine, but this isn't really what I go to Georgette Heyer for. And there's a lot more kind of drama and tension there, which again, isn't really what I'm looking for. So overall it was okay, but definitely I see why, I think I've never reread this one and I can see why I never have reread it. Uh, I probably won't reread it again unless I forget what the storyline is. So I gave this three out of five stars. And then I did have a couple of DNFs this week, starting with Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko by Hitoshi Ashinano, translated from Japanese by Daniel Komen. So this is, I think, a bind up of a, a manga that I'd heard about from Rachel at Kalanadi, who I will link below. And it looks kind of cute. It's about this android who runs a cafe, sort of at the end of the world when humanity has really become very sparse and all these sorts of things. But I got only about 13% through this because I just was not into it. Um, I think the premise sounds really interesting, but the art style wasn't really drawing me in and I wasn't really feeling very attached to the characters or the world. So I feel like 13% isn't that far in. Maybe there could have been more in this, but I just wasn't drawn to the story and some of the interactions, um, the, the main character Alpha, this android, she interacts with a local old man who like runs a gas station. I just wasn't like a super huge fan of the old man and the interactions. And yeah, I don't know. This just wasn't, wasn't really meshing with me. And so I just decided to stop reading it. Not that it's in any way a bad book, but I just wasn't drawn into it. And then another DNF that I had this week, which again was not a bad book, I was just not drawn into it, was Woman of Light by Kali Fajardo Anstein. So this is a book that was on an anticipated releases uh, list that I had last year, and I was really looking forward to it, but I have just struggled to get through it. So I have been picking this up on and off for like the past five months. Um, I just kind of borrow it, read a little bit here, not really interested in picking up more and then my loan expires and I have to give that book back and then I get it back again and then I read a little bit more but I'm not really inspired to continue and this has been going on and on and on for months. So finally at 52% um, I decided no more. I'm not going to just keep borrowing this book only to read 5% at a time. Um, it is totally fine, but I just am not drawn into it. It is kind of a multi-generational historical fiction about a family of um, indigenous Latinx characters based in Colorado area um, or the Lost Territories. And it's about their family and it's about like one of the, the kind of more modern storylines takes place, I believe, in the 1920s. Um, in Denver and that is dealing with a lot of really interesting history and interesting topics of racism and all sorts of things that are going on in that time period and yet I just wasn't drawn into the story I just didn't I just didn't deeply connect to any of the characters and even though I generally really love historical fiction especially ones that are set in such unique settings where you don't get a ton written about those I, I just was never inspired to pick up the book again and so I, I resisted DNFing this for such a long time because I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in it, except that I just wasn't interested. <laughs> So I, I finally realized that I, I think that's probably not going to change and I gave up on it, but I'm not sure why I couldn't get into this because there's a lot of stuff about it that's very, very cool and I, I like what it's doing. Um, so hopefully it'll work out better for other people than it did for me, but I, I finally just decided to call it. Okay, so that is everything that I read and DNF'd this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, you have any comments, or if you want to share with me what you've been reading this week, I would love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.